Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. Okay, I'm going to continue with the power of intention. We are we are still on chapter one, viewing intention from a new perspective. The meaning of omnipresent intention. Try imagining a force that's everywhere. There's no place that you can go where it isn't. It can't be divided and is present in everything you see or touch. Now extend your awareness of this infinite field of energy beyond the world of form and boundaries. This infinite invisible force is everywhere, so it's in both the physical and the non-physical. Your physical body is one part of your totality emanating from this energy. At the instant of conception, intention sets in motion how your physical form will appear and how your growing and ageing process will unfold. It also sets in motion your non-physical aspects, including your emotions, thoughts and disposition. In this instance, intention is infinite potential activating your physical and non-physical appearance on earth. You formed out of the omnipresent to become present in time and space. Because it's omnipresent, this energy field of intent is, is accessible to you after your physical arrival here on earth. The only way you deactivate this dormant force is by believing that you're separate from it. Activating intention means rejoining your source and becoming a modern day sorcerer. Being a sorcerer means attaining the level of awareness where previously inconceivable things are available. As Carlos Castaneda explained, the task of sorcerers was to face infinity intention and they plunged and they plunged into it daily as a fisherman plunges into the sea intention is a power that's present everywhere as a field of energy it isn't limited to physical development it's a source of non-physical development too this field of intention is here now and available to you when you activate it, you'll begin to feel purpose in your life and you'll be guided by your infinite self. Here's how a poet and a spiritual teacher describes what I'm calling intention. O oh Lord, thou art on the sandbanks, as well as in the midst of the current, I bow to thee. Thou art in the little pebbles, as well as in the calm expanse of the sea, I bow to thee. O all-pervading Lord, thou art in the barren soil and in the crowded places, I bow to thee. And that's from Vida, the 16th, by Sukla Yajur. As you make your metaphorical bow to this power, Recognise that you're bowing to yourself. The all-pervading energy of intention pulses through you towards your potential for a purposeful life. How you came to experience yourself as disconnected from intention. If there's a omnipresent power of intention that, that's not only within me, but in everything and everyone, then we're connected by this all-pervading source to everything and everyone and to what we'd like to be, what we'd like to have, what we'd like to achieve, what we want to achieve and to everything in the universe that will assist us. All that's required is realigning ourselves and activating intention. But how did we get disconnected in the first place? How did we lose? How did we lose our natural ability to connect? Lions, fish and birds don't get disconnected. 
The animal, vegetable and mineral worlds are always connected to their source. They don't question their intention. We humans, however, with our capability for presumably higher brain functions, have something we refer to as ego, which is an idea that we construct about who and what we are. Ego is made of six primary ingredients that account for how we experience ourselves as disconnected. By allowing ego to determine your life path, you deactivate the power of intention. Briefly, here are the six ego beliefs. I've written more extensively about them in several of my previous books, most notably Your Sacred Self. Number one, I am what I have. My possessions define me. Number two, I am what I do. My achievements define me. Number three, I am what others think of me. My reputation defines me. Number four, I am separate from everyone. My body defines me as alone. Number five, I am separate from all that is missing in my life. My life space is disconnected from my desires. And number six, I am separate from God. My life depends on God's assessment of my worthiness. No matter how hard you try, intention can't be accessed through ego. So take some time to recognise and readjust any or all of these six beliefs. When this supremacy of ego is weakened in your life, you can seek intention and maximise your potential. Holding on to the trolley strap. This is a practice I find exceedingly helpful when I want to activate intention. You may find that it works for you too. See chapter three for an entire chapter describing ways to access intention. One of my earliest memories is of my mother taking her three boys on the streetcar on the east side of Detroit to Waterworks Park. I was two or three years old and I recall looking up from the seat and seeing the hand straps hanging down. The grown-ups were able to hold on to the straps but all I could do was imagine what it would be like to be so tall as to grab those straps way above my head. I actually pretended that I was light enough to float up to the hanging handles. I then imagined feeling safe and the trolley taking me where it was destined to go, at whatever speed it chose, picking up other passengers to go along on this, gloria, on this glorious adventure of streetcar riding. In my adult life, I use the image of the trolley strap to remind myself to get back to intention. I imagine a strap hanging down about three to four feet above my head, higher than I'm capable of reaching or jumping up to grab. The strap is attached to the trolley, only now the trolley symbolises a flowing power of intention. I've either let go of it or it's just out of my reach temporarily. In moments of stress, anxiety, worry or even physical discomfort, I close my eyes and imagine my arm reaching up and then I see myself float up to the trolley strap. As I grab the strap, I have an enormous feeling of relief and comfort. What I've done is eliminated ego thoughts and allow myself to reach intention. And I trust this power to take me to my destination, stopping when necessary and picking up companions along the way. In some of my earlier works, I've called this process the pathway to mastery. The four pathways may be helpful to you here as steps towards activating intention. The four steps to intention. Activating your power of intention is a process of connecting with your natural self and letting go of total ego identification. The process takes place in four stages. Number one, discipline is the first stage. Learning a new task 
requires training your body to perform as your thoughts desire. So eliminating ego identification doesn't mean disconnecting from your relationship with your body, but rather training your body to activate those desires. You do that with practice, exercise, non-toxic habits, healthy foods, and so on. Number two, wisdom is the second stage. Wisdom combined with discipline fosters your ability to focus and be patient as you harmonize your thoughts, your intellect, and your feelings with the work of your body. We send children off to school telling them, be disciplined and use your head and call this education, but it falls short of mastery. Number three, love is the third stage. After disciplining the body with wisdom and intellectually studying a task, this process of mastery involves loving what you do and doing what you love. In the world of sales, I call it falling in love with what you're offering and then selling your love or enthusiasm to potential customers. When learning to play tennis, it involves practicing all of the strokes while studying strategies for playing the game. It also involves enjoying the feeling of hitting the ball and of being on the tennis court and everything else about the game. Number four, surrender is the fourth stage. This is the place of intention. This is where your body and your mind aren't running the show and you move into intent. In the universe, there is an immeasurable, indescribable force which shamans call intent, and absolutely everything that exists in the entire cosmos is attached to intent by a connecting link, is the way Carlos Castaneda describes it. You relax, grab the trolley strap, and allow yourself to be carried by the same power that turns acorns into trees, blossoms into apples, and microscopic dots into humans. So grab that trolley strap and create your own unique connecting link. Absolutely everything in the entire cosmos includes you and your disciplined, wise, loving self and all of your thoughts and feelings. When you surrender, you lighten up and can consult with your infinite soul. Then the power of intention becomes available to take you wherever you feel destined to go. All of this talk of intention and surrender may cause you to question where your free will fits in. You might be inclined to conclude that free will is non-existent or that you become whatever your program dictates. So let's take a look at your will and how it fits into this new view of intention. As you read the next two sections, please keep an open mind, even if what you read conflicts with what you've believed all your life.